Is Gavilar actually talking to the Stormfather? There's some weird things happening. Also, Vasher? Preview chapters for Wind and Truth have begun! This week we got the preface and the prologue, which may not seem exciting considering the preface is literally a single paragraph and Brandon did a reading of the prologue almost two and a half years ago. But let me tell you, there have been some updates since then. Of course, spoilers for the entire Cosmere. If you haven't perused the preview preface prologue, please proceed to perform presently. Perforce, praise patrons! Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithi Carone, Gallant Aegis, and the son of James. This is the final look at the night of Gavilar's assassination, now from the perspective of the assassinee. And honestly, it raises more questions than it answers. Interestingly, we start in exactly the same place that Way of Kings starts, the prelude to the Stormlight Archive, the last desolation, a Harietium, when the nine survivors surviving heralds abandoned their shard blades and Talm, and the Oath Pact was broken. Gavilar is seeing this in vision with the Stormfather. Or is he? He specifically picks up Chana's blade. Significant, because I don't think that's the only time she's mentioned in this chapter. Or is it? But we'll get to that. Gavilar is interacting with the Stormfather in a way that we've never really seen before. He isn't yet bonded to Storm Daddy because he hasn't found the right words, presumably the first ideal. In fact, Gavilar keeps on trying different phrases during this entire chapter, each time the Stormfather replying, These words are not accepted. Only once does he get close, with his demand to be made a herald, though I think that was mostly close in intent. Strength before weakness and all that. Or maybe I will unite instead of divide? Mm. He expects to become part of the Oath Pact, replacing a herald, Talm. Hey, if it ain't broke. The Stormfather says he hasn't promised that, but it does seem specifically dangled as a carrot to get Gavilar to bond and become his champion. Already the contest of champions is being pushed. That's new to this version of the prologue. We see post-rift pre-Nightwatcher Dalinar come in, who says he feels a kinship to the Parshendi. He was the one who found them. Gavilar expertly and maliciously steers him towards drink. You know, it's basically Gavilar's fault why Dalinar was sloshed off his Rishadium that night. He manipulated him right into his addictive spiral. Enter Thytokar, in a cloak tattered at the bottom with a spike through one eye. Kel wants Rastaris, or else. I wonder who Sion that is. I'm not sure I believe it when Kelsier said Ayatil was going rogue in Lost Metal. Seems like he's pretty hands-on at the moment, as much as someone with a tenuous grasp of actual hands can be. Kalak and Nail come in. This is the first time Gavilar has met Nail. Rastaris explicitly states the Ghostbloods want him because he knows where Ba Edo Mishram is hidden. The one who could rival him. Is that capitalized him referring to Thytokar or Odium? The Stormfather says that Mishram tried to replace Odium, which caused the false desolation. She was then betrayed by the Radiance, or specifically Kalak somehow. Gavilar was experimenting with transporting Spren, Stormlight, and Voidlight off-world in gemstones in aluminum boxes. Apparently that works, at least to Braze. At this point, Navani's interaction with Gavilar occurs. Because we get it in a previous prologue, it's not really expounded on here. Suffice to say, Gavilar's a jerk. Once she leaves, the Stormfather manifests in the room in the rough shape of a person. Another thing we've never really seen happen with Dalinar. Amaram comes in with some Sons of Honor recruits. Amaram's a jerk too. No wonder Yasna shut him down. One of those recruits is the King of Carbranth, Teravangian. We find out that his mom, ten years prior, death-rattled about the Night of Sorrows. It seems Teravangian has been on the hunt for a way to prevent that, which continues until he makes the diagram. This is pre-Nightwatcher Teravangian as well. The only time we see him at his... I don't know, base level? Esh and I's interaction with Gavilar then happens. It's really interesting to see that in his effort to establish his legacy, in his pride, he literally brings about his own destruction. If he hadn't bragged to Esh and I about Void Light, how would the world be different? Speaking of Void Light, we finally get kind of an answer to that nagging question, how did Gavilar get a Void Light sphere? The answer? Vasher? A secret scholar, a master of all things scientific, a man from another world. How long has he been on this planet? And why is he working with Gavilar? I always considered Vasher a grump, but at least a decent judge of character. And how is he creating void light and anti-void light? 
Does this mean his method of hacking Stormlight into sustaining investiture is actually producing breaths? In which case, is that same method somehow also capable of creating other types of gaseous investiture? And if that's the case, how much of a jump would it be to condense that investiture into liquid or perhaps even solid form? Can Vasher convert Stormlight into purified door or loracium? What is going on with that man? After the feast, the Stormfather regrets being so accommodating to Gavilar. Maybe that's why he's so different and standoffish with Dalinar? But then he feels a herald die. There's really only one herald who it could be. Everyone else is accounted for in some way. Talnzon Braze, Yezrian, Nail, Kalak, and Shalash are all at the palace. Ishar is ruling Tukar. Pylea is presumably in the Palanium in Carbranth, maybe hanging out with Batar. Videl... Okay, we have no idea where Videl is. But Chana's a notable redhead! Brandon took out the mention of her red hair here, but we have her art, we know. And the timeline for when Shallan's mother dies would be very easy to match to Gavilar's assassination. They definitely occurred in the same year, at least. Then Zeth arrives. The whole fight is skipped over. Gavilar feels himself start to die. Have a nice trip. We learn he was actually talking to the Stormfather when he gave Zeth the Void Light Sphere. Storm Daddy says he's never going to trust the Kolins again, which apparently was a lie. Not the only lie the Stormfather tells, or at least this version of the Stormfather, which differs in significant ways to the one we're used to. So what do you think? Is it actually the Stormfather that Gavilar has been interacting with? He sees the right vision, but there are more entities on Roshar that can create visions. Is the shift in personality simply the Stormfather's resolve to approach finding a new champion differently? Or was Gavilar working with someone else entirely? Let me know in the comments, or if you want to dive deeper, join my Patreon or my Discord. I'll have a recap video for Rhythm of War coming soon. In the meantime, check out my other Cosmere Connection videos so you can read and find out. Excuse me.